If you're looking for clear pro-life thinking, cutting-edge apologetics, and a fresh approach to abortion dialogue, you've come to the right place. This is the Equipped for Life podcast. So last week we did an outreach at Winthrop University in yep. South Carolina, and we were experimenting with a new sign. We usually are in R and D mode <laughs> R&D, yet again. Yes, it was very exciting because usually we have the table set up. Should abortion remain legal? We call it SARL for short. Sometimes we do should 20-week abortions remain legal, especially when we had the pain-capable bills coming through right. everywhere. So we wanted to try something a little bit different. And um, we spent some time kind of brainstorming exactly how we wanted to word the question uh, on the table because I definitely wanted it to be something that was thought-provoking and approachable because our point of the outreach is to get into conversations and mm-hmm. talk about abortion. Right. So we decided on should— well, When we say yeah. we, like I feel like you were the one kind of like, I've mm-hmm. got an idea for a new sign, and you kind of brought this to us. We talked yeah. about like five versions and landed on one. This was a really good idea that you had. Thank Just you want to make much. sure Thank that, you. that <laughs> you should well, get credit for that. It was, it was a half-baked idea when I brought it to the team during our staff meeting, and we kind of put it through the oven— And came out with this wording. So it was, should third trimester abortions be available, which is a little different than our should remain legal. Mm -hmm. Usually we're having the legal conversation. And I think I wanted to talk about availability because I think many people are willing to bite the bullet on, like, should third trimester abortions be legal? Available is like just a different it's a different, I wanted to say accessible in my rough draft. Mm-hmm. I, you know, in, in women's studies, we talked a lot about accessibility mm. and the states that have third trimester abortion or late term abortion in general are what we call destination states. So oftentimes someone from another state that maybe has more restrictions on gestational age, mm-hmm. they have a 20 week cutoff or something like that. They might fly or drive to a state that has a 28 week cutoff. Right. So, Those are more the destination states. And we see abortion practitioners also flying in for work between, you know, different states for that, too. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about accessibility. And it was actually Andrew that pushed me for availability because it sounds a little bit more mundane, everyday, you know, accessible sounds very women's studies, gender and health minor. Anyway, so the idea of this table and I actually want to encourage people to set up this table and try it out. If they've done SARWAL before Mm -hmm. um, and they want to experiment with something, I want them to try um, should should their trimester abortions be available. And so, you know, this is our first time experimenting with it. And what I, the reason I had come up with the idea, I wanted to try out making the pro-choice argument about uh, bodily rights arguments necessitate extremism. We have a blog post on that. I'll link the description. Um, And, The idea is if you support first trimester abortions because of the idea, it's my body, it's my choice. I can do anything I want with my body. If that's the reason you're pro-choice in the first trimester, but you oppose late term abortion, third trimester abortion makes you so uncomfortable or you think it's wrong enough to be illegal, you're being inconsistent. And if we can point that out to people, if we can point out you need to be consistent, if this is the reason that eight-week abortions are okay, her right to do whatever she wants with her body, then that also is the reason that third trimester abortions would be okay. You can apply it because the baby's still inside her body. And it's been an interesting thing to Mm -hmm. make that argument on campus because we've got, I mean, certainly a lot of our followers have heard me tell a story maybe multiple times now of of, 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 of a woman kind of figuring that out and then basically biting the bullet. And I've Mm -hmm. got this funny story that I tell about that and how Jacob kind of freaked out when he when he saw this go down. Um, And that was kind of the 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 story that culminated in that really good article that 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 Tim wrote. But to be fair, also, a lot of times when we've made that point to people, it's interesting how like there's no other response that we give that sometimes causes students to abandon the entire category of arguments altogether. And Mm -hmm. they will jump to personhood Mm -hmm. because they don't want to be seen as an extremist. I was talking about this on on Kristen Hawk 
a Kristen Hawkins podcast uh, recently where, um, you know, there's kind of some new psychological research and I can't get into all the details because there's kind of an embargo thing on it right now. But like, the, I'll just say, and I have seen this that I said this before, like young people tend to not want to be seen as extremists. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting thing to know. And I think in some ways that works against us and in some ways that can mm -hmm. work for us and a way that it can work for us is in this case where, where, where we show, look, if this is the way you're making the argument, it just we don't have to connect too many dots mm -hmm. for them to see, okay, if you're going to stick with that argument, that's an extremist view. You're yeah. an abortion extremist. How do you feel about that? Like, that's not exactly <laughs> the question I'm asking, right. but that's kind of what I want them asking themselves as yeah. a result. And it can be really, really effective. Yes. And this question and this idea of extremism is directed towards the mushy middle. It's the people who... Yeah really really don't like abortion right. you know we hear the standard pro-choice argument i would never have one right but i don't want to tell other people what they can and cannot do it's aimed at that person right. it's helping them to see the justification they have for their position right now the one that they're very comfortable with they don't have to choose sides they right. can be the moderate the right. centrist right it helps them see that they're actually not if they want to be consistent with that argument then they need to find a new argument right. or they need to become an extremist. And right. that is, that is the idea behind the sign. So that was in my head. And then we go to <laughs> campus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, it was an interesting day. Yeah. And this is just kind of how research and development goes because even someone who understands how pro-choice people think, which I would like to think I do, <laughs> given that I've talked with a really? lot of them. You right? went to women's studies. Mm -hmm. I don't like you said that really quick. And I thought I was saying something, <laughs> but I just want to like just mm -hmm. like underline this point really quick. For those that don't know, you minored in women's studies at University of Michigan. Yeah. Like you did that. And it, it, we, we've said this before. I think the best analogy here is you wanted to kind of learn a foreign language. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to learn Spanish if you move to Mexico for a while yeah. and are just around people speaking Spanish all the time as opposed to the way that I tried and failed to learn in high school out of like a book and like a CD room or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. like th that didn't work out very well for me. Um, you like surrounded yourself with pretty hardcore yeah. feminists. It was the deep dive into pro-choice feminism, right? Yeah. Like, really hardcore pro-choice feminists were in my classes. Abortion pra practitioners, late-term abortion practitioners, were my professors, you yeah. know. So I did the deep dive there and then, of course, interacting with them um, during campus outreach as well. And so the combination of the two, I feel like oftentimes I'm able to put myself in their shoes. Right. And so I'm putting myself in the mushy middle shoe and I'm just like, okay, where would where would I not want to be? <laughs> and right. then I try to put them there. Right. So because I'm trying to help them become pro-life, right? right. It's so helpful. it's a good thing for them yeah. to go through that process. And I anticipated bodily rights being a big thing that day. So just I want to give people, because I want people to do this outreach, I want to give them a little bit of an overview of some of the things that I expected. Yeah. Um, to get so like for example someone that's put between this dichotomy late-term abortion or you have to abandon bodily rights they might say and i got this on campus spoiler alert this actually happened <laughs> well in the third trimester that's post viability couldn't she just have a c-section right because if she really doesn't want to be pregnant anymore she doesn't have to kill the baby she could have an emergency c-section or schedule one right. and um, both baby and mom survive and she doesn't have to be pregnant You're anymore. trying to wriggle out of the problem here. Yeah. And here's the issue. If it's true that she can do anything she wants with her body, then why would you be forcing her to choose a C-section? If right. she doesn't want to be pregnant anymore, maybe we, we could have that option, but shouldn't she also have the option to have an abortion? Right. Of course, we all agree, carry to term, sure. If she wants to do that, wants to give birth at term, sure. But why would you be comfortable with right. the government right. putting, you know, <laughs> gestational limits on women or like whatever, right? right? So we we talk about that. It uh, doesn't it, solve the problem. It doesn't them. solve the problem. It, it seems like a nonviolent solution that we should all support. You know, you could argue that the woman should have to carry to term because that's best for the baby. And of course, that's true it's going to have a better chance of being healthy and surviving if it's full term. We have lots of premature babies for reasons that have nothing to do with this. Right. right. And, and we have care for them. So you could, you could have a conversation about that, but it doesn't solve the problem. Yeah. And I actually ended up having that conversation a lot. The other thing is you get to play pro choice. And I, I was able to do this in one of my conversations. I was having a, a conversation with me and then three students mm -hmm. and they had varying ideas <laughs> about abortion. 
So that's always interesting, right? Because you're like juggling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like juggling like like three conversations at once. They really weren't talking with each other. I was talking like each of them separately, which is like so like. <laughs> that's really hard. That Yeah, it's, it's complicated. But I, I, I posed this to them because we were talking about C-section. Why do you think it's okay for the government to put restrictions, you know, and, and, and go through that? And, and one guy, he was like, you're really good at not being biased. Like, he's like, you're playing for both sides right now. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I am, I am. We are really good at that. It was fun. It was That's fun. really cool that he noticed that about you. So I, I want people to be prepared to do that when they go to campus. And there yeah. are, like, different levels of sass and fun that you can have with that question, <laughs> right? And if you're one of those people that you have a little bit of charm, you have a good sense of humor, I think you can pull it off mm-hmm. pretty liberally um, and just, you know, make that joke. But if you're more of a serious person, I do want to caution you. You don't want to seem like you're mocking them. Yeah. Because I can play the feminist pretty well, you know, and and they know I'm kind of joking around with them and right. it's more of a laugh. Right. And, you know, come on, you misogynist. Why are you doing this? Why are you, why, aren't you for women's rights? And they're like, oh no, yeah, right. this is a problem. And right. they like joke around with me. And um, so just, you know, find your style with that. And then I kind of want to um, go into a little bit of, what we encountered more often, well, one question I got a lot. Mm. I would say 80% of my conversations, people came up, they, they look at the sign and they say, when's the third trimester? That was a surprise to me too. I was shocked. Our whole team was like, people don't know what the third trimester is. I understand if, if I had five months up there yeah, or even 20 weeks or something. I think right. that's a little bit. But I'm like, everyone knows third trimester, right? No, people don't. People are not around pregnancy in the way that they used to be, they just don't have as many siblings or whatever, especially if you're talking to college students, a lot of them just yeah. haven't, you know, dealt with any sort of pregnancy before. So they don't know third trimester. And so be prepared to answer that question graciously. Um, a lot of people asking me, how many trimesters are there? <laughs> and that's, that kills me. You try not to that's laugh. That's one of those. It's mm-hmm. like, is this the world that I live in? And I'm right like, now? tricycle, <laughs> <laughs> trimester, but Okay. And one kid, even after I explained it, he was like, okay, so there's four, right? And I'm like, no, 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 there's three. He's like, well, birth? I'm like, what? You're, you're out of pregnancy. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, uh, be prepared for that. Okay. Okay, so personhood. Don't make fun of them. <laughs> you don't make fun of them. Stupid. Yes. Um, personhood came up a lot. I was expecting to have more bodily rights conversations throughout the day. Mm-hmm. We actually ended up having more uh, personhood conversations I was surprised by that. Now, did yeah. personhood come up for you? Um, not really, because okay. most of the time, uh, like I, I, I was really trying to make sure that Andrew, who was, you know, who's only with us doing mm-hmm. hours uh, oh, oh, so often, I really want to make sure that he was around the table a lot. And I also didn't want more than one or two guys around the table at the same time. And mm-hmm. so I kind of deprioritized my own conversations. Yeah. Partially, also, I recently did an outreach with St. Olaf, our favorite students for life club and they were all just hello to you guys you guys are awesome i just kind of felt like like andrew mm-hmm. could really use more and uh and he did he had, he had a lot yeah. of conversations so i was in picture taking mode i ended up in one conversation with a guy because andrew needed a break <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, I rotated with him yeah and it just wasn't that good of a conversation there's kind of an apathetic guy mm-hmm. um and i know apathy is a thing that we encountered a lot we'll talk about that mm-hmm. in a few minutes but he would he would fall into that category we didn't really get to personhood or bodily rights because he basically was in this kind of mode of, I don't even know if I should care. I don't know if I should have a view on this because I'm a man. I gave him a reason to think that he ought to care about it as a man. Yeah. And and we kind of talked about Christianity a little bit because he's, he's like, I'm a Christian. I'm pro-choice. And mm-hmm. and at, some, at one point, it kind of seemed like he had no limits. And so we kind of had some interaction about that. And ultimately, you know, I, I think the thing that I struggle with the most in these conversations is, is dealing with apathetic people. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not the first time I've talked to an apathetic student. Uh, and I've tried a bunch of different things. Um, and I know a lot of other outreach people have kind of struggled with the same thing. It's like, how, how do you convince this person this matters? And I've got this whole thing I use sometimes. I think I heard Scott Klusendorf say it like a really long time yeah. ago. There's kind of like, look, no matter who's right on this, it matters. If pro-choice people are right, I'm trying to make this medical procedure illegal and more dangerous. That's mm-hmm. not okay. If pro-lifers are right, there's a couple thousand kids getting killed every day. Like, that's not okay. So, like, the only position that really doesn't make sense is apathy. Like, I've got this thing mm-hmm. that I try, and it's the best thing I know, but I it doesn't have a very high success rate, to be fair. So I'm super fed up with these people, to be yeah. honest. And I ran into some bro choicers is what I call them. You know, oh, the, gosh. like 
literally frat dudes because the frat guys were like, uh, they had a table probably like 20 feet away from us. Mm -hmm. And so they're from that table. Even if they weren't at the table, I would have been able to peg them as frat guys. I'm just saying they had that whole vibe. Right. Bro choice, you know. Oh, I'm a man. I really don't think I should have an opinion about this. You know, they're talking to me. They're super woke. I really think it's like, yeah, oh, so woke. (laughs) Like, so. And I'm like, hmm, you're instantly like 10 times less attractive, but okay. Um, (laughs) To you. Right. To your kind of person. (laughs) Well, okay, so these guys, you know. They're, oh, well, I, 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 it's really a woman's issue, don't you think? Like, I really shouldn't be talking about this. So I didn't say this to him, a particular guy that I'm thinking of. I didn't say this, but I might say this to the next guy here. They say that to me, to be honest. Um, okay, I just stay on your couch, keep doing what you're doing, and I'm going to end abortion, and you're not going to be able to stop me, right? Because there are a ton of pro-life women like me. We're leading the movement, if you've seen us on TV, uh-huh. okay? It's the pro-life women that are taking down abortion. So if you don't think you should have anything to do with it, I'm taking away your choice, dude. So like, then, like on, honestly, so, I, I'm just over it. So we haven't talked about this. <laughs> so, so is your thought at that point is like maybe this will be the kind of thing that kind of pokes them in the right way mm-hmm. to get them to be like, no, 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 like I don't think you should be able to to do that. And then you can travel. <laughs> I thought you can't have it. Like, is that kind of the hope? Yeah. Like yeah. honestly, I I would rather have them in a state of panic. <laughs> and I want them to like think honestly. I want them to like think through. Oh, oh no! Like she's she's gonna take away my abortion or whatever. Right. Um. I would rather have them. I honestly would rather have people fired up than sitting on the couch. Yeah. Because I want people educated. Yeah. Um. Like, and maybe that's a bad pro life thing to say. You know, like, oh, I want people to be pro choice, but like, I would rather them care. Right. And no, say, I, I'm gonna I have the same yeah. view. Or, or because the because the reality is, him saying I'm not gonna do anything. Is a pro-choice position, right? It is. You know, the just status quo back. is mm-hmm. pro-choice. Abortion is legal. It's very right. available. Yeah, right. And so he wants to. I'm going to wash my hands of this. I don't have to deal with it because it's legal and whatever. Right. So it's a cop out. It's not a real position. Um, and I just want him to stand his ground and admit and man up and say, right. I support abortion. Right. So. I might snap at the next guy. <laughs> that poor guy. He's going to have my fury from the last 50 frat dudes <laughs> oh, no. I talked to. All that back. <laughs> All the, that back. The day of reckoning. But anyway, yeah. we're, we're, we've gotten off topic. However, <laughs> um, now that it's okay. Now that we're on it, though, we yeah. got to talk about the indifference we saw at the table. Yeah. And then we'll come back to personhood. It was a so, surprising amount of apathy all day, according to the whole team, when we debriefed at the end of the day. Absolutely. And the one thing that I have seen people in the past, in my outreach experience in the past, I've seen people draw the line at, like, third trimesters off the table. Right. Usually they're like, anything after the first trimester, I'm against. And people care about late-term abortion, and they are pretty strongly opposed to it, right. especially after they've seen um, images of abortion victims in the late term. And so I was expecting people to care more about this than like general abortion legality. Yeah. And we saw the opposite. I saw more indifference at this table than I've seen with Sarl. So that mm-hmm. was a surprise. Now, there's a couple of things that could be going on. Right. We've done outreach at Winthrop before. Um, I think we've only done one, but I yeah, will say. There's one a couple years ago. Yeah, a couple years ago. And it's a particularly chill campus. Yeah. Like the people there don't really seem to be very political or very like activist. They all seem to be very like relaxed. I don't know. From our limited experience. <laughs> our, that's yeah. how yeah. the people who stopped and talked to us, that's mm-hmm. how they came across to us. Yeah. So everyone seems to be just kind of in general attitude and culture on campus seems to be in that direction. Right. And so they could be an outlier. This is why I want people be. to test Every this Every campus table. has its mm-hmm. own culture kind of. And so it could yes. just, that could just be a winter thing. And that's true. We, we've we run into different ones that are like more social justice oriented, right. more science oriented, right. and then more chill. And like there's all these different things. And so this is why I want people to test this. We don't go and do research and development on one day for like eight hours and then right. say, all right, this is now it, we know, know mm-hmm. all these things. Right. So I want people to have conversations on your campus, and I want you to, like, report back to us. There's a couple of things I want you to observe. One, how many people do you get when you ask them this question? They kind of just shrug. Like, you like put them in an indifference mm-hmm. bucket. They're just literally, like, laissez-faire. Hmm, I don't know. Right. Like, third trimester. When, when's, when's third trimester? When she's, like, showing and about to give birth in the last, like, three months. 
Yeah, I mean, like, it's a baby, but whatever. Like, I saw that on campus, and I was like, what? Right. What are you talking about? Are you right. cuckoo? So I want you to keep track. How many people do you talk to as a club um, that do that? And then I also want people who, you know, they come up and they're kind of interested, you know, track that. And then people that are fired up. Yeah. So I would say interest is like, no, definitely. I don't think it should be illegal. Like, what are you guys doing here today? What, what right. What's this display? That's not indifference. It's that's, not that's available already, is it? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Or, or is, is it legal in our state? Is it legal federally? Like right. they're asking questions. They're interested, but they're not like picketing. Right? right. Right. So if people are like passionate, they want to yell at you, they're picketing or whatever. I would put them in a different category. Yeah. Have the like normal interested person and then the completely right. indifferent and try to figure out wh- how you're drawing those and, lines. And I would add one more mm-hmm. thing to that. If you're a club that already does a lot of outreach, St. Olaf, like you, like <laughs> if you're, if you're like, if they do like every week or two, they're mm-hmm. doing outreach. Like if, if those ratios seem different than your normal outreach, that would be very interesting to me. Yeah. Like, like it's possible that for whatever reason, this pull table sign like leads to, to apathy or or maybe it's attracting the apathetic students more than other kinds of displays. And if that's mm-hmm. the case, that's interesting. But if it's also is like, you're like, no, this is pretty typical for our campus. We talk to lots of people who are apathetic all the time. It mm-hmm. seems like people are more apathetic now than they were a couple of years ago. That's another thing that we would really like to know because, mm-hmm. you know, you, you want to basically get kind of information from as many sources as you can, assuming mm-hmm. it's like decent intel. Um, we're kind of interested in wondering, like, yeah. are people just more either extreme and just kind of willing to bite the the, the late term bullet, or and or are people more apathetic than usual? Have you has your club noticed a, a trend that way? And I definitely would take it more seriously if you've done should abortion remain legal poll table mm-hmm. because I think that's the closest comparison to our setup. Right. And if you've done other displays. I think it would influence how you answer that question. Yeah. For example, if you're one of those campuses that's been able to bring out like huge signs and set them up, mm-hmm. that's just going to have a different reaction from campus than right. if you have more like a, a pro-life recruitment table where you have a lot of pro-life stuff. Mm-hmm. And so let me know what kind of outreach you usually do, because yeah. if you're doing like justice for all outreach and you have like a big setup, that's going to get a different response on campus than right. if you have you know, your table with your fetal models and you're doing like more like recruitment or pregnant on campus or mm-hmm. something like that, which, you know, that's great. But I would like to know what is your other outreach experience and what is that compared to this yeah. too? Because that's going to, I think, affect the meter. There was another thing that we tried um, for the first time that I felt like was a, definitely a good shift for us. I and liked it. I know mm-hmm. other people have already done this. And so if you're already doing this, cool. We have three jars that people can vote with, and we're using Starburst. We just bought, like, a couple of massive jugs <laughs> of Starburst, and people can't. It's like, we're just like, we have this, it's like, hey, you want to vote? You want, like, like that kind of thing. Right, like holding out the thing, and then they all they have to do is take a candy and, like, vote wherever they stand. Right. And we had, like, clear plastic containers so you can easily see with color, like, where yeah. are people on your campus voting? And I, we actually got way more the maybe it depends category yeah. on this table than we have with should abortion remain legal. And I do like having the it depends sign because oftentimes people will put yes or no. And then you start talking to them and they have exceptions on both ends. Right. And so then you're like, so why didn't you put it in the it depends category? And that's yeah. like a th- very thought provoking question in the conversation oftentimes will help people think through, hmm. Why am I supporting all abortion when really I think it depends? Right. That's like pretty cool too. So that actually brings yeah. up another. So you said something to me very, that that surprised me a lot. Mm. and was actually kind of like, it was a little bit frustrating to hear, but it mm. probably means that like, it's, it's a thing that people should know if they're going to do this outreach. Mm. You talked to a surprising amount of people that accidentally voted wrong. Yeah. So I don't know if they're just not reading the question very carefully or what I don't I don't even know what's going on, but yeah, people would be putting, you know, should should third trimester abortions be available? And they would put no. Right. But then when you talk to them, they meant yes. So I don't know what made people vote no when they really meant yes. I it honestly might be don't. a reading comprehension thing. <laughs> but you were asking like a clarification mm-hmm. question that helped you discover sometimes that they had voted wrong and, and, and what yeah. was that? Well, I would say, so why did you vote no? And then they would like look at the question again and they go, oh, I meant yes. So, and I would be like, oh, okay. But like, 
I was more concerned about talking with them about their position than being right. like, why'd you put a candy Right. Here? We're not like trying to like fix it. It's not a real poll. We don't really care <laughs> about someone the from, results. Someone from the administration came up to me and they were like, is this, um, is this poll like official or are you collecting information of any kind? And I was like, it's not very official. You know, it's just like candy. And uh, would you like some? <laughs> it's literal <laughs> candy. Does this look official to you? <laughs> Yeah, if this is official, then what do you what do you think official is? <laughs> this is anyway. It was an interesting um, way to go about it. We've done stickers in the past as well. That's something mm-hmm. else we've done. Would you like to put a sticker and they can vote on a sign right. um, and stick wherever they want? It's, I liked this really uh, better. I think this yeah. is my favorite thing that we've done so far. I mean, bottom line, it's there to start conversations. Right. That's all we're trying to do. The voting doesn't actually matter. I just think that the color of the starburst and things it helps poll table look a little bit more attractive right. and people are like more curious and that's the point so do you have a guess i i because I, mm-hmm. I i think i got us off track earlier when we were talking about apathy um you had brought up personhood arguments mm-hmm. and that you know our staff in general like i didn't have very many conversations that day but 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 the rest of our staff did and we kind of had these big categories of there were a lot of apathetic people but there were you said there were more uh, people kind of making personhood arguments mm-hmm. than you expected like Talk about that a little bit, and do you have a guess to why that came up more often as opposed to bodily rights arguments? So, yeah, in our debrief, we talked about bodily rights versus personhood arguments and how much they came up. Definitely, as a staff collectively, there was agreement. Personhood came up a lot, Mm -hmm. and we weren't expecting it. Yeah. When I do should abortion remain legal, I would get, I would say I get bodily rights more, at least at first, than I get personhood. Easily. For me. Easily, right? Probably 75%. Like, my body, my choice. Okay, yeah. we go through, we destroy the bodily rights arguments, and then they move to personhood. That's right. usually how my conversations right. go. Or we if talk I about bodily enough. rights arguments the whole conversation. <laughs> right. That happens It depends on how much time I have, right? Right. But if we go through and they're like, okay, bodily rights arguments defeated, personhood is where they go next. Right. That's like the order right. for the most part. Where this table, no. It was personhood first and then maybe bodily rights. Yeah. The reason I think it was personhood now that I've done the outreach is because it's a gestational, like, milestone. They're thinking about just, uh, uh, about, like, fetal development Mm -hmm. because of this word on the sign. Yeah, and they were like, they were like, okay, so when does it become a person? At what point in pregnancy does it become a person? And What is it like in the third trimester specifically? Mm -hmm. And I think because we have premature babies and all of that, people are thinking, hmm, at that point, it's a baby. It's a person. Yeah. Is it a person earlier on? Where's that line? And so I ended up making equal rights argument all day long. Yeah. Um, and that was really interesting to just see people, you know, talking through that. I had some people where I would trot out a, you know, <laughs> trot out a toddler, a newborn baby and, you know, talk about infanticide. Okay. So what's the difference between that newborn and the baby in the third trimester? And it's just so close. Mm-hmm. Of course, I want to convince people on you know, six week embryos, it's just harder. Yeah. And so personhood came up a lot and viability came up. Um, And so I would say, if you're going to do this outreach, you need to know equal rights argument without equal rights argument. You're going to lose a lot of people. I'm pretty soon, probably not by the time we put this out, but pretty soon there's going to be a new video. We're going to be promoting a lot Mm -hmm. that um, we've partnered with CareNet on. That'll be about the equal rights argument. So if you're looking for like, it'll be like eight or nine minutes. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for maybe kind of an easy, quick way to maybe show your club, the equal rights argument, like best thing, get the course, get the equipped for life course. But if you don't have the Mm -hmm. course, there's going to be a video coming out that kind of explains the the basic idea. And it's really cool. It's like a PragerU kind of video. We can update the description on this video to promote that video afterwards too, so that you can have it. So we want people to try this. Mm -hmm. We want people to, how are they getting in touch with you with the results? Let's just have them email me. I think Rachel at equalrightsinstitute.com is going to be the best um, email for you just to tell, tell me, you know, Okay, so I, I don't want to, it depends on how many emails I get, but I'm like, I'm thinking about like, would I rather read a really long email or would I rather have a 20 minute conversation with you on the phone? Honestly, I'd rather call you. Yeah. So um, email me like the, the short story. Yeah. And then if I think it's worth hopping on the phone, I'll schedule a meeting with you okay. so that we can kind of talk through your experience. But in that short email, I kind of want, okay, we did this many days of outreach with this table. Um. Give me a one paragraph summary of how it went, approximately how many conversations you had, and you meaning the mm -hmm. club, the 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 royal, yeah, yeah, collectively, 
And so that that's kind of what I'm looking for. And then I'll I'll respond and, and let you know if I need more information because I just kind of want to track and see how this is going. Did you have that indifference? I want to know if people don't care about third trimester abortion anymore because if they don't, we need to ch- we need to change the way we're teaching things. Yeah. Um. You know, a lot of times that's like my first clarification question is, do you support abortion all nine months? And usually I get the answer no. Right. But then at this table, I got the answer yes. So I was like, what the a heck? lot. A lot of people were supporting third trimester abortion, like disproportionately to previous outreach. And I need to know, has our country shifted? Is everyone like, you know, supporting the Democratic candidates? And they're like, well, you know, Bernie thinks it's a great idea. So right, like, come on, Mayor right. Pete, like I'm on board. If you the know? major DNC yeah. candidates don't have a limit, then maybe that should be my view too. I'm wondering if, 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 if we're moving that direction. That's super interesting because in the past, I have had people be really pro-life late term. Yep. So if that's changing, I want to know. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll look forward to getting people's responses to that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for listening to the Equipped for Life podcast, a project of Equal Rights Institute. Equal Rights Institute uses speaking, writing, YouTube videos, podcasts, online courses, and campus outreach to help pro-life advocates in the areas of practical dialogue tips, relational apologetics, pro-life philosophy, and sidewalk counseling. If you've been helped by this podcast, please consider supporting it by making a donation at EqualRightsInstitute.com.